I did a video uh, a couple of days ago where I did a R1 run uh, just to show you the tips and tricks of getting spores early before the work, first boss and I wish I knew <laughs> the video um, which you know I've watched every video I think that that of the main streamers that played the game um, many of them have left the game now so that's why I want to do some updated content and especially that spores got changed and it's a game changer if you're struggling to beat Reincarnation 8, uh, Reincarnation 8 Jockle, which is just Reincarnation 8 on hard mode, makes the last act very difficult and, um, well, not very difficult, harder, and the last boss harder. But if you use this, honestly, um, I've got a video on the channel, one of my early kills. My son said after I did my first R8 solo, uh, he's 25, um, oh, well, you have to do the Jockle now, and I went straight in and did the Jockle and killed it just as easily because I wish I'd knew earlier that skill-based stuff pitters out as the run goes on and really weapons scale well but skills don't. So the main thing about skills is you've got to get to some defensive stuff or the skills that add to your weapon damage. So on this guy, and we'll have a look in a second, you know you can add rate of fire and things and there's some good defensives. The only downside of this hero is you've got to do your, your you know, grenades or something and paid up the enemies when it gets a bit hectic, uh, so they don't hit you as hard. The E also has a shield recharge and max shield. So defensives are crucial and actually are first picks beyond, uh, beyond damage because we're going to get spores early. The way I worked it out very quickly is I could not find any good videos. There was just one video by, you know, the odd person that put up them beating it and, you know, not really owning it, to be honest and really what they said wasn't that helpful across all heroes and this one works generically across you know, all heroes. So I've done videos on every, every hero on the top there, all eight of them, on how to beat um, Spiritual Assault which is a great way to farm essence because you can assure things that you can't in the run we're about to do in the reincarnation run. Just doing an R1 because there's an example on the bunny of me doing an R8 and just for dime and length of video um, the principles are the same. It's working out how to play the game with all that it gives you and how inscriptions work and how, uh, where, you know, what, what, how can you upgrade a weapon, for instance. I used to think, because on the first boss, weapons engrave, you know, if you etch them, because they have four etchings at any craftsman's beyond that point, you can put a Gemini etching and then re-roll it. If I got a weapon in the first act, I couldn't re-roll it to Gemini in the second act, so you'd have to toss it away, even if how spores works. It doesn't matter about the weapon level or the main one, it's the off weapon. So I wish I knew how spores worked, <laughs> and I'll explain that. So this here just makes us, every 50 enemies, have an injector drop and a shotgun drop. So that makes it a bit easier in reincarnation. We're, we're relying on just RNG. But we always get it, you know, always within the second act and before the second boss. Sometimes before the first boss, uh, you can get it as well. Because it's based on the weapon being level 5, not the number of inscriptions below is what I worked out. Um, these two are what makes that happen. So if you run around for one minute, the first craftsman in Spiritual Assault, just run around, don't kill anything. But you don't want to kill them all. So many times I've just pew pewed everything. And my injector and shotgun drops, the 50, and they're really easy enemies to kill. Um, just before the craftsman, because that first craftsman will have weapons that are level five with Geminis to buy off. And so what I do is I run around for one minute and then pew pew everything, I look at the peddler, see if there's a shotgun there or even a temporary main weapon. Um, and usually a shotgun or injector that I want drops. If not, you just hold off and you can see the video on each hero how to do that. But this is the crucial thing that makes R8s easy. As Lone Wolf, you get to select overconsumption. I'll explain why I think that's the best in a second. Um, but so you've got plenty of firepower. You've got 300% weapon damage, 300% skill damage, 50% movement speed, 50% extra shield, 50% so survivability, 50% health increase. And your dash is cooled down by 50%. Um, and your primary key, your orbs, you get 50% cool down. So you can get two in the same space with, as if you didn't have that. That's why overconsumption is best anyway. But what this does is money is a real, you know, it's RNG. If you don't get scrolls, 
that give you coin off enemies, and some of them give you penalty like extra damage for 50% coin, like the Devil's Covenant. Um, you really don't start performing until you get spores, and I think it's the best Gemini, and I'll show you why in a minute. It got reworked, and so a lot of videos that I watched and played on the Crown Prince, I tried combustion, I tried miasma builds, which is a mixing of elements. You know, you, you roll that the elements shared between the weapons really do not perform anything like spores. So if you're trying to get that first kill, these two, and you can watch the videos on how to beat spiritual assault. It's a great way, I think level 60 it unlocks. Um, great way to get essence. I mean, I used to struggle with die and think, how does anyone kill anything here until I worked out the system? So I just applied that, and I don't know why it took me so long to doing runs like normal runs. So I'd watch videos and slight RNGs, and I'll link to those later, but I always have a, I think his information on the builds and the priority of choices along the way, they will differ that a little bit because, um, you know, he's not specifically building for a sports build, which is very, very powerful. Especially, I don't think I'm a great player, and I'll put a link in the pinned comment towards that. So we're just looking for choices more defensively on our skills. And the other thing about skills is you'll have an unsuccessful run because you didn't get your ascensions you want. That's what I mean by skills. You know, your ascensions were bad RNG, um, and this compensates for that. So let's uh, show you the, the things I wish I knew a long time ago. Um, so we'll do a new adventure. I'm just gonna do um, reincarnation one to make it quick. I don't make the video too long and I'll, if I have time, I'll put up the R8 on each hero later using this. It'll be simmer but longer and I'll put timestamps and chapters so you can just go and see how it performs late game, go and see on each boss. But it is worth jumping to some of the pertinent things because you've got to understand how spores and that work. So Lone Wolf makes things harder as if it's two player. But it actually is a better choice. So things are hitting twice as hard. Realise you're very fragile and can fall over even in an R1 earlier on, um, on any if you'd have not even that chosen. That makes it on hard mode. Um, it just means that the last act gets pretty crazy and the boss has actually got clones and that explodes. But again, if you do this build, it will work just as well. And then if you get lucky on scrolls and ascensions and so forth, um, it just, you will blitz it. So overconsumption, as I said, there it is there. The only downside of that is you have to be selective on scrolls. Every legendary scrolls diminishes those statistics above by 3%, rare scrolls by two, and normal scrolls by one. So don't just chew scrolls willy-nilly, melt them down, don't just leave them there. Um, and usually by the end of the run, I don't think I've ever been below 50% of that, so I benefit from overconsumption by being selective for the whole run. I also just want scrolls really that are defensive or add to weapon damage, not so much on skill-based damage or elemental damage. Now usually I'd come in here, I would do for the Crown Prince, I think it's called Elemental Majesto or something, gives you 100%, not after it. Oh, this is a good window to get. These are the two in the run that I prioritise. The first one is this one here. It's the same thing exactly that you saw in Spiritual Assault. You can only have 20 cursed scrolls, but you know if you get 20 good scrolls and you just get rid of the fluff, I've never had a problem with that. And the benefit that it gives me to be re-rolling for free from the start of the game, you are not waiting for the RNG of, of scrolls that give you coin. So the hidden treasures, it used to be a good one, you'd kill every pot, crate, explosive barrel on the way through, it slows the run down too just to keep getting every bit of gold, or the one that drops epic, you know, coppers off um, enemies um, extra, or the other one that you've got to be within seven metres, which you've got to play more dangerously and you can lose a run from being, you know, close when you can play the far game. So I want that one as the first, but I will always choose any mushroom beyond here. I don't care about damage, we're gonna have it straight up because of this, and spores. I'm always gonna choose that if it turns up. Never choose anything that's skill-based damage along the way. We're just going for weapon-based damage or survivability. Okay, that's the weapon we want. And um, it's only got one inscription, but that doesn't matter. We're just after that one and that one. So we've got our shotgun for our run. We can keep that to the end of the boss. That number 
always is higher in the first act. They reward you for keeping a weapon. The projectile count that is. Usually that's 12 and the Argus is 13. So that will, will scale the same. That's generic across all of them. That'll be above 400 by the time we get to the end boss. So understanding that this does the heavy lifting for the run, what's down here is useless, just that number and that number. This doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. You might get a weapon later on that has higher projectile count. Because we have this from the start, we can use every craftsman on the way to the first boss to get that up. Okay, we're off to a start here. Remember, everything can hit hard, even you can fall flat on R1. But your skills... Now, the other thing about this hero is your skills are not great. Now, if I had a bunny, one Q would just destroy everything. One grenade, that is, uh, which is Blossom on that one. They're a little bit weak, and they only get stronger as you do an orb build. You have to select or a grenade build according to slight RNGs. And then it starts to pitter out when stuff gets hard, when you really need to perform. So, yeah. It's the, not all heroes are equal, but it does have CC. What have we got there? It's one of the weapons that's a bit faster than this temporary. i to press this continuously. Uh, we want to get an injector now. And um, when I say an injector, uh, I'd like to get a, a rainbow. A hearts firing weapon is what it needs. This is too slow, 445. Something over a thousand. And the angelic aura is one of the best. The radioactive glove is over a thousand. Um, and will go up with levels. And the thing about spores, we're only ever upgrading this at the craftsman. We might have to get one of these up to you know five if we get the right weapon, just to get it uh, with the Gemini on it with spores. But that gives you freedom as better main weapons that you actually shoot with, and the inscriptions do matter on that. We're looking for rate of fire is the key one. Lucky shot secondary, they're the two we're looking for. Now usually you'd be doing full amount of build here, and I'll show you here we had our first goblet, what we're looking for. So we switch it up from Slight Sight. His One Pick Wonders are still great at the very top and worth understanding. What I do with his theory crafting, and I think he's the best on gunfire, and I've watched a lot of vids, is he will explain how something works. Something seems good sometimes and it just doesn't perform. And so if I don't understand something, this is more straightforward on the Crown Prince. But that's a no-brainer as the top pick he's got there because anything we paint up with um, our grenade is defense. And at level three, it means we're taking, they're taking more damage. And that's what I'm saying, spores is gonna hit an extra 60% harder for 20 seconds. And then anything we have, you know, our grenade on, if it's a grouped up thing, um, we'll do 60% less damage to us. So we're looking for anything for defense. Not worried about max capacity at that point, that'd be secondary. This one's another good one in the um, middle column just because it gives us more max shield by throwing our grenade again. Don't care about base damage, I'm not using my skills for damage. If you're doing a grenade build, that'd be crucial. That's not important. Um, and that's not important, the damage. Uh, you know, lasting grenade's a bit longer, so the defense lasts longer is helpful. So, uh, and we're not doing an orb build again, and you have to choose between these if you're doing a run, and you might get a bit of a bit of this, bit of this, bit of this, and you're not really strong with your skills in a way. So we're just looking for CC. Now that's not bad, because it means that when we do something and paint them up, um, our defense of them doing less damage to us and they can't shoot when they're doing it is not too bad. Uh, that's not a bad one, just have an extra CC. So we use CC crowd control, that is you're just freezing them in a dangerous situation. Uh, not worrying about base damage of what our orb does. Uh, this one's a good because it gives us weapon damage by using our orb. So you just keep on you know, doing that on cooldown on bosses and then any elites that might be difficult. But that's probably the best one in here is just getting shield recharge and um, the delay on this class. Other classes don't have delay. And we might get a scroll that makes us kill an enemy and we have uh, no delay, so we're looking for scrolls defensively too. So if you get unlucky with ascensions, the run can be successful simply because um, the RNG, you know, you'll get a scroll or something, the RNG is taken out because overconsumption will carry us 
in the first two acts. We can do lots of damage, just remember we are fragile. Now, because rate of fire and how spores works, the faster the rate of fire, and some classes have that built in, um, the faster the spores stack and explode, stack and explode, stack and explode. So that's one of the key things we're looking for inscriptions on the weapon, and you've got it built in as a class, so that, that really is a good one as well as this. Because anything with an elemental effect, and if we get the, ele the the glove probably is a better one for the crown print because it's got decay on it. It both slows the enemy, which is defensive, but it means we're going to get the benefit if this turns up of 120%. That's weapon and skill damage, but we're not looking for the skill damage per se. That's a knot. Um, that's a knot. That's a knot. It's if you're doing a lightning build or a fire build. Again, they don't perform well the end game. And that's a knot really, even though you think corrosion because we're doing corrosive grenades and that, um, you'd be better off picking the other options first. And if that was nothing else that I've just shown as good ones, you would choose that over, you know, the ones I just said here, these three. All right, that's the build that we're going for. Changes it up a bit because we're going weapon based. So in this, um, that just means it freezes more, which is more defense. Um, more explosions around. You could go either of those two there, I'd be happy with, but I'm going to do that one. Not a great first choice because there's not a lot of defence. And then we go back for our side rooms. Always get your goblet first. Uh, where did I see it? Wanted to talk about the build we're going for. Here we are. We've not got a great starting weapon. We've got our shoddy, but just realise you're fragile. Just keep painting them up. Keep being on cooldown just to stop them shooting you. Be on when you're reloading. It's an easy room, this one. The first two rooms are always easy. Third can get hard, you get an elite, and you want a better weapon than we've got now. Now, be selective on scrolls. I'm going to take that. Um, I'm not really worried about the, the dashing, but I want to have a scroll that's mediocre unless you dash a lot and have it on. We do have cooldown on it, so that reloads. And it's good with a fast firing weapon early on. But we want to be able to hand over to a chat chest a scroll if it asks us. So always keep a scroll, even if it's not great for what we're after. Just in uh, your, you know, your scrolls there to be able to hand over. Now, the good thing about why reincarnation is hard, easier than nightmare, nightmare is a nightmare. You don't have any of the starting choices, like overconsumption. You don't get the mushrooms along the way to get a spiritual remnant. You don't doing 300 percentage at the beginning here. You can run out of ammo in the side rooms on an elite. I've done that on a nightmare. And we've got our first craftsman. Now, you normally wouldn't have the money to you know, you might get a level on a weapon or something, thinking that's what you want to do. We just want to get our off weapon ready for the first boss. Even with a weapon that I don't like, and has a, you know, pretty, you know, reload often. You can still kill this room. Just keep queuing. The, this first act, they're very generous on dropping secondaries for you. Just watch out for the fire on the ground. You can really lose a run from them. So, I can't etch that it would destroy the weapon. I just want to get up to five. So I'm going to use all three on that, even though I'm not shooting with it right now. Um, you could shoot with it. It's just a little bit of a slow one. It's a good weapon. I mean, I'll use it now. Just clear the rim here. It does sort of one shot everything, but see, it's a lot slow reload. And we have got the dash for reload. I don't know. Still the animation is slow. Go back to the woodpecker. We've got the damage, it's just 300%. It's just that it's a bit more forgiving with the aim with the wild hunt. So just go slow and patiently through here. Don't be impatient because once we get spores, we'll be one shotting everything. Like, seriously. And as we get more powerful and better weapons, we'll be doing it right through the game. Okay, I mean, I'm so used to selling for money, but money's not an issue, I just need it for scrolls. So we always get our goblet. Always check your NMO if you need secondaries. Shoot those, we've got our eight back. 
Okay, so we've got um, two. That would normally be if you're doing a grenade build, you think, oh, wow, you know, but we're looking for defense. So we've got um, a clear choice here. That's a damage, and that's a damage. And that's if I throw a grenade, I get an extra shield. So what's my shield at? 159, because we've got 50% more. And we've got 189 by doing that. So just a grenade means that if we get hit hard, and we get more of those, um, and if we get the one that does less damage to us, it can be a great defense by painting up the enemy. The good thing about, um, I'd say the harder runs, the hardest for me are fixes or challenges of each room. And what I'd say, read every room as you step into it. Is the one that says you've got to get a um, crit shot with the foundry. And if you're trying to get those tacticians, the snipers, and you've got things chasing you like arsonists and they've got tiny heads. It can be the end of a run and the Crown Prince is good because you can freeze the enemy, get close, that's the danger. I want to play a long game early. Um, a good one for us, it means that we aren't really relying on our second. It does. We can drop it at any time. We're just doing a paint up and then shooting, but it does give us another E to CC something in a crap moment that we might get killed. <laughs> So the scrolls I'm looking for, and the best uh, defensive scroll is Feline Cat. 100% damage taken, so when I first read it, I thought, oh, I'm not going to do that. But the maximum you'll be hit by an enemy is 14% of your health. Now, usually there's a peddler here, and we, I look for a shotgun, and we get to refresh. That's not ideal. Um, you might take it early in a pinch uh, in the second act if you didn't get your shotgun early because the multiplier is 10 and the base damage doesn't scale as well. So the other one's going to be an extra 30% damage straight up. That is a really good one and I might take it now because if we get the radioactive glove, um, it's a health, like a health steal, a life steal. This is a good one and I would, uh, what do we go? I'm going to get rid of that clearly. Um, we can sell it for gold, just uh, want some gold for peddlers. That or the scalpel, it's not too bad, but let me just see what each one has. I'm looking for rate of fire, really. None of those are really helping us, um, except for the reload, which is nice. So we can kill the boss with that weapon. But I don't want to get better. And did I refresh? Nope. Again, a shotgun doesn't have a multiplier, so it's not helpful for those two. The porcupine is a very high multiplier, but the base damage is low. Uh, you would not want to use that. Q usually owns that stuff. These guys are annoying. Now the best game early, uh, the best weapon, is the rainbow. Because you're so fragile, you can actually shoot through. Whoops, those guys are there and I'm getting out of there. I'm slowed. Um, just shooting these pots. They will always throw a grenade and can end a run. Marking that for later. How many grenades got left? Two. I just want them running through it. That's where um, duration of the grenade lasting longer is a helpful one early on. If you get that and there isn't better defense, you can pause the game in single player. It wants a curse scroll, and we do not have the evil talesman, so don't ever do it. it can wreck a run. Get some really brutal stuff. These guys, spearmen are really dangerous. Really dangerous. So, paint them up to slow them as well. Even though we haven't got defensives out of it, it does mean they slow a bit. You want to get crit spots on these guys. But when we get spores, crits don't matter. I mean, they will help if you want to get crits. But you got to, you know, you got to be a bit closer for that. You can hit anywhere in the body, and they will die like it's got lucky shot or crit. Being really cautious here, even though it's a one. Uh, those, one of those explosion guys, and you get back to your corner from two directions, it's all over. These guys with the shields are annoying, you have to hit them in the head. Um, otherwise, the damage doesn't go through them. The brilliant's about CC is you can slow them down to make my aim a bit easier. Missed him with that the guy, he's immortal, I'm just going to run away. Now once we get spores, we won't be playing like this, we'll just be running through and one-shotting it. So 
the first act we've got the damage but you can still die and you know, I've run I've died on an R1 as I've died on an R8 in this room in early days um, just playing recklessly and thinking she's cleared an R8 that you can just be too aggressive and die just painting up a bit for uh, slowing them and I'm hoping to get some defensive ascension soon and you know we got extra health and shield just by throwing a grenade because of that ascension choice get our goblet first not going to do the chest we'll be at the boss soon and we'll have another craftsman soon okay so we've got um, freezes two more enemies it's good again for CC um, I've got enough damage because of overconsumption or carriers through the first two acts. So I'm not really worried about that because our grenade would assure that as well. So I'm going to do that one just to be able to freeze around the target I am in an oh crap moment. Just want to stay alive. This one can be a bit hard. Spores is nice in this, but we don't have it. Just have to kill the longbowmen when they come out. They're the most dangerous and exploding head guys. So we'll just paint them up a bit both sides and get some extras from these pots on the sides. It doesn't matter if that green, if something reaches it, don't panic. Just as long as it's not fully depleted. And there's something range is hitting that. It's the, it's the uh, range guy up there. So Spearman's on there. You're better off losing the sh You're going to get one scroll out of this. Could be a really good one. I've tended to notice in the first act, you don't tend to get a lot of legendaries, but more likely in the later acts to get that. So don't wreck a run. Simply because of one scroll. Jump out the thing there if you're nearly dead. Especially on the harder runs, you know. And you can get some, I'd say the hardest room in, in this on earlier runs is the one with those they're all inactive statues and if you do one shot or something they come alive and that can be brutal for one scroll so if you're just trying to unlock a harder level you might want to opt out of that one just getting rid of that guy this is a hard one I might lose it yeah I'm going to lose it I'm going to get out just to show you not an R1 you just uh yeah, we lost a scroll, it's not a big deal. Overconsumption now 300%. Is going to kill the first boss with ease, even with this gun. The rainbow is great because I could shoot through here and kill them and not be in any danger. Oh, I think I hit the wall with my grenade then. Now, normally I'd play a bit slower and get all of my eight grenades in the previous room by killing the pots make sure I can paint up, but you know, you don't want to make the video long. I just want to show you how to get spores early is the point of this video. Uh, sometimes there is a vault there. It's a tough room this one with the longbowmen mainly, not the shield guys. They're a bit of a pain to kill, but longbowmen are going to spawn up top in a second can own you, and the spearmen if they come up. Grenadesmen. Paint them up and jump up here. I'm going to get these guys and paint them up. It's like it's going to be crossbowmen instead of a longbowmen. Don't worry about the spear guy, the shield guys too much now. There's a chat chest there. Sometimes, often is. Just try to use your defence here so other stuff can't shoot you through the wall while you're getting the other stuff out of the way. Now these guys, you can't shoot their shields. So there's a way to do that in a second. You can CC them and then once we got the range guys out of the way and then just strafe around them or you can when you bait them is another way get close and they'll try to melee you but in this room we've got the height advantage we can come up here and then shoot them in the head as they try to come around for us often a vault in here um, up top. Always worth doing it in the third vault, even though we've got the second one was a bit difficult. Uh, usually that would be a great one because money is, it was an issue in the past for me until I chose that first starting spiritual remnant of Inheritor's Craftsman, or Craftsman's Inheritance. Uh, I don't need money here. 
and they're all right. But I would have definitely taken that before I realized how important money is early. Um, I might just skip this because I just want to show you how to get scroll of it. Yeah, that's the hard room. It's good to at least show you. I'm not going to do it for a scroll. You hit one of these guys. Uh, by the way, skills do not do that, but our skills are not strong on this hero. They don't actually activate, so on the bunny it's quite good because your swords are really strong. Uh, fairly hard. Read your messages. A few monsters, they're just going to get harder and harder. Going to get that. And then there is a peddler there. I just want to have a look straight away. It's a phantom peddler and they could be OP. Now we got an angelic aura. Thank you. Um, see, it says rate of fire, and that's why it's so good. And it's got an extra projectile count. So I'm going to swap the star one there. This enhanced always. But it slows down our dash and primary skill cooldown if you don't own scrolls, and we don't. But it gives us defensive of 15. This is the extra stuff. Uh, max HP, max shield armor for each curse scroll. We don't have any, so I'm not choosing it. But I am glad to have the aura. You watch the difference of the rate of fire on this. We don't even have spores. We're getting a hard rooms on uh, an R1. I've got an R1, yeah, dude. The longbow and the is dangerous here, I want to get him. This gun does burn through ammo and this class doesn't have ammo regen like on my bunny. Use the sides here, don't run out in the main here, just let them come up to you so you can pick them off a bit. This hasn't got the wave so we've just got to survive and get these guys down and we'll be sweet soon. around I froze him the advantage of CC here and having an extra projectile like we got cooldowns quickened by our overconsumption so it's up a lot paint them all up keep moving <laughs> mid air oh it's slowed by something So just the grenades for defence, you can see they really are pretty lacklustre until you've got ascensions and I'm not even going for those. I want to get that low bam, long bowman down. Just the range of the really dangerous guys in here. Look, I'm nearly dead by two that spawn behind me. Just going to revive because I want to show you the spores at least. Talking and playing I'm not real good at. Oh, on this character, it just doesn't have the defense that some others have. If you're on the monkey, then you wouldn't have died. They have a, just an inbuilt survivability that when they get to zero, like the life skill, the lifesaver, that they've got five seconds to run around, get their health back, get their shield back, and it's like a second chance. And the beauty of that, if we'd you know, been later and died and had the fake death, you could just kill something really quickly like that. I just went in too aggressively too early for those long bones. Anyway, the main point is I just want to get to show you the spores and how it owns. I don't need to sell that. I'm just wanting craftsmen at this point and defensives. Any new defensives? And the run can still be successful. Uh, you know, it can be a game changer on that first mushroom. We get the fake death or we get something like feline cat, you know. That's just damage and it bypasses so it'll go through the shields and that um, weapon damage so I'll go for that one. Could do capacity just to get it up a bit so we are using it but I'll do weapon damage. So we're at the boss and I just want to show you how to etch. So we're going to go here and we are going to um, enhance. If we etched it now I would have wrecked the weapon. To level five and etching it and now we have that we've got spores on our weapon so this gun on the left if i etched would just do a fourth etching not a gemini because it's not level five so what we'll do here is enhance it we've only got one left just to get the boss down and that's enough to kill the boss with overconsumption. Great scroll for this class. Oh, we got a rainbow. I meant to look here first. I should have used it on that. What have we got? Lucky shot. Lose a little bit of rate of fire. 
It's got corrosive on it, which is great for slowing. I'm going to swap my Angelic Aura, even though this would boss better. I should have looked here first. I forgot. Had my shoddy. And I uh, wasn't really as... And that's a great weapon, but you have to aim. And we need to get some defensive skills up. So we've got that. I'm going to go straight up for the 40% weapon damage. Now this boss can crit. Shame you can't have one spare weapon. And I should have done the one, one level on that. And again, I can't etch that. But as soon as I get to the first craftsman after this boss, and it doesn't matter too much, we've got a good one here. And that means less reload. And we've got deft hands. That will carry us through to the second boss and we can pick up a better weapon here. So we're sweet. Check your ammo. I always just do that because the injector burns through it and we are short. You see we're out. You can run out of ammo on this boss with injectors. Okay, so you right click the head on this guy and the corrosion will slow him, which is the decay, which is right. There we go, we see the yellow numbers, just keep moving. Orb him and paint him up. Especially if you've got defensive, I've misclicked there and it's gone. It does glitch this, so kick dash out of that. Uh, if we had spores, he'd be dead. But this weapon will take care of all of these guys. And if we had the thing that said rate of fire on kill, that would have got our rate of fire up. Now you want to dash behind the column here and he can't, you can shoot through columns with this. He'll destroy that column, eventually, a couple of things, but he can't get to you. He's very frustrated. And then you just go across to this column over here. Probably gonna jump up again, just right clicking his crit spot. It does come off, it really glitches the right click on some things, going to hand and on a wall. Just use your Q on those guys. I wanna keep my beam on this guy. If you want to get a beam off the boss because you've right clicked, just swap weapons quickly back and forth. Just use a Q on these. He's going to die with an E and a Q. Come on. Okay. If we had spores, and I did a video, I can't remember what class, it was the bunny, I think, where well, I had spores on the first, you know, by here. But overconsumption is still running here at, we lost 7%. We got 93% of our base stats. Heavy shield is a great one. Uh, you can never read from that there, but it means that that guy would have hit us less. And if we get some defensive stuff as we go on, that's a really good one. Phantom skin, stone skin, felon cat, all legendary ones that we want. So what have we got here? We don't care about the corrosion, even though this has got decay, I'm not using that. And we'll be pew pewing at the first craftsman. Uh, energy or weapon damage, that's weapon damage. That does give you smack shield, so I'm going to go elemental shield for the moment. As soon as we get spores, now normally I'd be melting all of this for gold and struggling so I've got enough money. I will melt a bit early on, but you don't really need to do that for the run anymore. And it means that, you know, I used to have to max out that tree before I could do the harder content because money was an issue, but that one inheritor's Craftsman's Inheritor. Fake Death would be the best to get on here. Now that's what I usually choose at the uh, at the start of this run and I did a build in in on the left on slights that's pinned. Uh, but Ultimate Gambler might be best for defense. Uh, that just means it, it guarantees elemental but I'm not going to do that build because we're doing the spores will carry us. And I might not be using an elemental weapon. Um, you know we are throwing a grenade that's not that's not a bad one either but the only thing about that, I've got to remember I can re-roll if they're not good defensive choices. But that means that, now this will perform fairly well here. Just clean them up. And I'm just looking for a craftsman that's usually in this room. Here we go. Now look, they're not dying real fast. Look here, oh, a bit dangerous here doing this this early. So I want to get that up to five. And I want to etch that. And then I want to re-roll. Now I didn't have the money to do that and it could be 10 rolls. And I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to die. If I've got no, but if I can just dash out, these are all going to one shot now. Bang. Elite invasion, don't care. Just clearing all the little ads first. You can shoot through the rocks. And this is why Spawn Wall is the best element in the game. We killed the elite by accident on the way past through the rock. The good thing about elite invasions is you get an extra chance at Goblet. Clear choice for us now. We've got Spores. <coughs> 
we get rate of fire every time killing an enemy you can see that's going to be 100 percent uptime so this is a very powerful character when you get rate of fire on it just make sure you don't run out of ammo <coughs> and we only upgrade from here on this weapon we just had to get that up to five so i'll never upgrade this main weapon anymore i mean i could finish the video here now but i wanted to show you how easy it makes the run look for a chat chest on this one you can split it um, but because we can get an extra shield, I'm going to go health. Because that's our buffer. You know, I'll get it up to 153. And we can get defensives now for our casting grenade. Gets our shield up to 215, you see. It's, and it's also based on health. It's going to be the side room real quick. This is going to have an elite invasion. An elite come in. It's going to have bandits come down on the side. But we're going to melt him if it's not the shield guy. Don't be the shield guy. It's the shield guy. Still going to melt him. Normally he's hard work, he's the worst one in here. And we got a radioactive glove. Now, crit won't help us on that because it doesn't crit. Um, burning doesn't help us. Shock doesn't help us. And even though this has, that's gonna help us, that's helping us. So this is a better weapon even though it's got less inscriptions. <clears throat> We're not in a hurry for weapons. This will kill the second boss. So we could go through to the end boss with this. It's the, the, the other weapon, stone skin. So again, great defensive choices. We lost our rest, me being silly and having to rest with essence. And we don't have any backstops now. It's why solo play is so much harder. And spores means you can play early until you get defensive. Like I can shoot through here, just killed something through the rock. I can kill through here. I, the, that guy just copped up to kill me. So I can wait for the sound and then move around. Now the hell has a high projectile count but a low base damage but if i was in here and didn't have a shoddy by now i'd pick that up because rolls are free i would um etch it and anything in this act can be etched you don't have to get it up to five because it's already there with gemini and then re-roll for free so i would have picked that up any shotgun with a multiplier the worst would be the illusion but i'd still pick it up and put spores on it because it's not costly I can toss it once I get a Wild Hunter and Argus. Now we can just run through this, these rooms. These rooms always have the arsonists, and they are usually without spores. If we're doing an eight, we'd be killing just as quick. And you can have a look, and I'll link in my there, my bunny from two days ago, when I'm doing an eight, I have spores by this point, and I destroying just the same. It just performs so well. And the game makes these early enemies easier for you in a way, uh, regardless of, it's usually the challenges that make, you know, that room might've been hit everything with a with a foundry and I would have had to, you know, spores is, oh, actually it wouldn't have melted through, it just means 90% less damage. I've done it where I've just melted through if I've got spores on that one. So we're going for CC, uh, advanced shield. We're going for anything not CC, we're going for, our E gives us defense and shield. But we're not worrying too much now about this. You can use terrain like that, you just come around here. You're going to use these walls up here, these blocks in between us. They just can't shoot through rock. You can still die, remember you are very fragile. So play, even though we've got a couple of scrolls. Don't be too cocky at this point. The other thing we're after now is I want movement. We got 50% movement straight up through overconsumption, and that's why it's so nice. But if we get ostrich boots or abnormal speed, I'd be really happy. Um, sometimes there is a vault there. There you go, just get to know the rooms. Just see if it's an easy one. I don't want to take the time up of the video. Oh, this is a run one for a scroll. There's two scrolls off there. I've got what I need for now. I would do it if I was not recording. Got a throat infection at the moment, so sorry about the croaky voice. And this section can get pretty tough um, on R8s or even R1s without spores this early. You just take a sigh of relief once you get spores, let me tell you, on, on you know, the immortal and wait for him to die. If you want to kill the barrels, right click them. Like right click, it won't auto target barrels or anything. We've got a peddler there and that's usually where I'll get my Argus or Wild Hunt or a really good main weapon um, with a high yeah, rate of fire. So we've got a craftsman. Now we wouldn't have the money to have upgraded at that craftsman probably by this stage. I really do like that, but I don't want to replace on that weapon that one or that that one really, and I bet it would. 
be happy to replace that. Let's just do it. It's just, it's just a video. And I'm early on, I'm gonna replace this weapon later. But I don't wanna lose my lucky shot chance. And I got more, so 90%. That's often the one you'll get. And the minus 50% stability makes no difference on this weapon. You'll get that on the Angelic Aura sometimes, and that's not great. The weapon lifts a lot. It's hard to hit the crit spots. But again, don't need to hit crit spots with um, spores. We can upgrade one of this. Not really dashing a lot, because it's killing everything. You'd be looking at rate of fire like on that weapon, but I'm sticking with what I've got. But the thing is, I could pick that up now. Uh, it's got lucky shot chance, reloading, there's extra damage. We're killing well, so it tosses the old scroll out, because it's enhanced. But we could have gone to here and changed weapons. Don't do that unless there's a craftsman just behind you you can backtrack to, or you know, um, you know, go to the next room and come back with your spore weapon before you actually do the changeover. You, we wouldn't kill anything with this, um, it'd be hard. So we're only upgrading that three times. Every upgrade here now is this, the base damage is going up and it's got a projectile count of 15, which is really nice. It's usually 12 if you got it in the second act. And it's just that bit more. So I'm really just looking at where the dots are here. I know all the rooms now, you use your corners, if there's uh, tacticians there, we use rocks here. Spin around for the stuff that's behind us. Great weapon, the rainbow. It's the best defensive. The only downside of this is the third boss. If it's the cannon boss, you know, that, you know, you've got cannons. Pick up the cannonball after killing the octopuses to get his name. This weapon is poor because um, it doesn't auto-target the cannons. You gotta right click on each one and you haven't got time to do that. It's just death on an R8. So I usually try to go through that and I'll buy something off the vendor there, anything with a high fire rate and I can reroll for free. It's, always, uh, it's not like money's an issue I gotta save up. In the past, before choosing that craftsman at the start, uh, you know, so I'd, if I was on that cannon boss, I'd be choosing that. That does slow you down a bit, so I do not to do that. Heavy weapons do. Um, that's not going to help us because we're never going to get down to that, hopefully. And we got a Nargis by now. If we didn't, again, the inscriptions don't matter below. You can see the projectile count is less by two, but it usually is higher than 13, so it's marginally better than the um, Wild Hunt. We just got it early. So there, we would have got our spores by now. We would have backtracked. I would have chosen that. It's only a 10 temporary, but I wouldn't have upgraded it. Um, well, I would have upgraded because it's free, but it meant that my you want to get that as early in the game is basically what I'm saying. It's not going to be zero much, so nothing there for me. Again, be selective on scrolls, takes away your overpower. That's movement, weapon damage, skill damage. So, no, really. Um, it's just damage again and that's weapon damage, so elemental rage, and I'm doing elemental with this weapon. It had decay on it. You can get burning decay on it. And the thing is, even though it's got, I think, 10% on this weapon, is it, or 5%, 10%, because we're firing so fast, it'll be over 1,000 later on. This could be up to 1,200 later in the run, um, especially if you get rate of fire on this, that number will go up. We're getting that proc, so we're always getting corruption on there, really, basically. This is usually a hard room without spores. You're going to have um, guys that charge you. You've got tacticians up top, so I always move in close so they can't get line of sight on me. And we're going to get the guys, the bandits, with the yellow armor. The good thing about spores is usually you can, like corrosion eats through the yellow armor. Um, sometimes there is a vault up there, always check. If that's the way through, always check up here. There's a vault or a peddler sometimes. Uh, this, is, this is a hard room. This is where the bandits charge you, and if you don't have spores, you, and those everything one shots you here. Still, we're pretty weak defensively, don't get cocky. Use your angle so you can't be shot at, the charges can't charge you. Look for those corrosion. We're just melting everything. Something's behind, there's the bandits. Now we're melting through everything. It doesn't matter, I mean, this got corrosion for the yellow, but if it didn't have corrosion, we'd be killing Spores just is so much damage so early. I think the game is built for you getting Gemini's after the second act, so 
you can get it before let me see if it's a quick rim I don't want it be nice to get some uh, it's not a quick rim it's not a hard rim but it does take a while to jump around through the fire dodge the corrosion bolts for one scroll you know I'd do it if I was not again we got our craftsman as soon as you come in the room read a message if it's there on eight nearly every room is a message and some of them pretty difficult uh, everything you kill turns into those bandits that charge you that's a dangerous one and if you haven't got spores make sure you just sort of kill everything slowly you don't pew pew them all and then you've got 10 charges at you and you die or the ladder act they turn into sharks or lanterns you've got 20 sharks on you because you pew pew everything at once okay we bump that up and we're just looking for a main weapon and oh, i don't care because this will destroy the first boss and anything between it the second boss and i just love this gun for defense so he tried to shoot me and i know i can hear that so i move in when they shoot i move close i can go under them with this and shoot up i can shoot through they're charging, you just strafe them, let them charge in too. It just is only, you wouldn't, you know, if we didn't have this, I'd have to play a lot slower. Up here where you get, it gets really hectic, this room, you've got fire on the sides, and then you've got tacticians jump down, arsonists, you've got guys that charge you. Those ones, and because we're melting them, just strafing them, but I would not come up here. I would have to go around the room and kite them if I didn't have this. And then those guys, you can come under and kill them. A very difficult room on any reincarnation, made easy. Just because of spores early, it just destroys. Um, okay, that's more CC for more. But hex mode, we haven't got one. And that is, a, if you look on the screen, that's a good top pick. Anything we do our Q on, and bossing especially, uh, minus 40% damage, isn't it? On the first pick, I didn't read it real quick. Yeah, minus 40% damage and plus 20. And I'm not worried about the damage because I got that. And we're going to melt this boss. If you're unlucky and didn't get an Argus by now, this is another chance at it. So I'd be rolling. I'm looking for scrolls at this point, not main weapons. Um, I'll get something up ahead. And I want to choose that one. Because sometimes it says re-roll all inscriptions or give health for the cursed scroll. And now we're safe from them. That's a good one for bossing, so I'm going to choose that. It's only 1% loss, those two, for our overconsumption. And there wasn't a shotgun, but, you know, we've had a couple I showed you on the way through that we would have had it by now. Okay, so we just upgrade that. We've already got a weapon up to 14, and I don't usually have it that strong. We've got a base damage over 248. It's going to smash. Now on this boss, right-click the head and you'll see yellow numbers so it does crit it's a bit hard to get the right click like i missed him there but once you get your right click click this wing again i had the crit spot okay we'll just come on it glitches now he's there just orb him up paint him up for the damage reduction he's going to die if i just got my beam on him without the crit spot he would have died anyway but easy mode and on i've got an r8 video if you look for the bunny doing r8 with this method he melts within, I think it's 12 seconds on an R8. Now you'd be looking for a shotgun here, so you might pick, I would pick that up if I hadn't got my shotty and I had to do that without spores. But I haven't done the video yet, and I'm going through on each hero at the moment. Um, again, the inscriptions don't matter, just the projectile counts low. I would use that temporary if that was on the, the guy before, but I'm just, you know. That's a good one. It means our E, we get hit, and our E um, is lowered just by getting hit. Not that we want to get hit for that to proc, but you know. Oh, what have we got here? Defense again. Uh, that's still defense because it's just giving longer and we're starting to go into Act 3. A shark can be frozen, something that just catches you. Um, I'm going to do the plus shield here and the recharge. So I don't think it has to hit an enemy. What are we, 151? No, it's going to hit an enemy by the look of it. Some don't, like on the bird, you can just leap if you get it upgraded and uh, anywhere and you'll get your armor back. Okay, I would really like here, this used to be something I'd choose because I'm scrambling to get all my upgrades, but just choose something that doesn't hurt weapon damage and you don't want skill damage. Um, the reason I don't choose this one is it minuses dash and primary skill cooldown and I'm using it. I don't care about the lucky shot, I got the damage. So copycat's good. 
you basically, you know, um, upon killing or assisting in killing an enhanced monster, you obtain their enhanced effects. You know those agile, you know, the guy that's agile enhanced and they run around really fast, the lizards, whatever, you get their enhanced skills and that will make up for our movement speed um, and movement is life. So we've got the run set up here. He's agile, so we've got our movement here now. Look, look at the move. You can shoot them from under here and the catfish can knock you out. I'm not even doing my secondary for defense here. Killed all those lanterns as they're jumping down, just looking for a new um, main weapon. Again, every craftsman, all you're doing is getting your wild hunter Argus up. It just gives you the freedom to change your main weapon any time. So I'm going to enhance that three, four, What are we up to already? Wow, we're already... Usually I'm on, you know, 400 base damage, but because we're getting our weapons much earlier, and I only discovered this like a few days ago with doing the loadout. So I was following all the other builds and choosing, you know, Elemental Maestro for this guy, Maestro, and you want to get, um, I got... You want to get uh, the cappers and that because they can slow you, but I try to get the other boots that are blue called Snow Boots or Corrosive Shard, which is tw plus 25, um, Elemental damage, oh, we are getting that benefit too with this weapon because it's got decay. But I want it mainly, even if I don't have decay on the weapon, because it says you're immune to the effects of corrosion. And that means, you know, you get slowed, not only here, but in Act 4, the cavalry and the guys that do frost slow you. And you don't get away, it's a short death. They really get hard. We're going to get an octopus jump up here. And but die, we've got an alien invasion, just keep moving and start casting some defensives. He's immortal. Where did we kill the elite that quick? I don't know where he went. I think we did. Let me see what he I think yeah there he is, the kappa. Okay. Look at we're melting stuff with spores. I mean this hasn't got shock on it, but it doesn't matter. I'm so used to melting for money to upgrade, I don't need to do any of that now. But it is good to get gobl invasions, um, to get invasions by elites, and now we're powerful. That would have been hard if we didn't have good weapons. We haven't even got a great weapon, but uh, our Argus, if I took my shotgun and dropped it for a second, it wouldn't do damage to anything, my um, rainbow. So nothing there is defensive. That's just damage, and I don't care about damage for my skills, so I will do the upgrade capacity at that point, because... I don't want to run out of grenades in a tight point and not be able to use defences if I get them. And again, it doesn't matter whether I get good ascensions on the way through. We have got a grenade build so far if we've chosen some other choices. I want it to last longer. I want my corrosion to last longer on the ground. So that's over the, the base damage. Now we're going to get monks and sharks up here. They're the most dangerous. The monks just, you want to move in to get them early because you're going to be chased by lanterns and they can uh, ruin your day. This is the best weapon for lanterns and the radioactive because it will target whatever's closest to you and they move pretty fast. So just looking for craftsmen now and peddlers for a main weapon. We will do the side rooms now because often you'll get off the uh, side rooms. Yeah, we might get an upgrade. That was a shark. Usually with this weapon I'll use terrain, but I'm killing so fast so they can't chain you, use a box in between you, you know, shoot through the gate, because this weapon does it all. And that's why it's so good defensively. Just keep moving, we're moving because of the copycat, I think. Really fast. Something had, uh, was enhanced, that I killed the shark, maybe. I know he had a blue name. That's the enhanced, of course, and the blue name in it. Not melting anything, because I don't need gold now. Got enough for a scroll now and then. And off the, Phantom Peddlers, I'm just looking, there's a craftsman ahead. Always look at your mini-map, especially, you know, it might be hidden around behind a wall or something. Just always bump that up, I'm not worried about that. And there's our Phantom Peddler. There's the snow boots I wanted. This is actually better, um, gain immunity from slow effects and damage taken from traps. That means any traps now. Um, and I think that means the traps left behind behind grenades and that which are on ahead are immune to. But now the octopuses, the the cappers, 
which are the slow guys, and in Act 4, the frost guys, no longer will uh, endanger us with slow movement on us. So corrosive won't affect us and frost won't affect us. Just spin around, looking at your mini map there in case something spawns behind, we're moving pretty quick. Speeds up the run this too. Uh, he's a powerful enhanced monster, copycat will get whatever he got. I got slowed by something. Shouldn't be able to. I don't know what did that. Just wanting to get those catfish can nuke you. They push you back. They do a big hit on your shield. Should be painting these up. But I mean, the problem with this build, uh, this hero, is using your primary and secondary stop you firing your gun, and the gun performs better. Sorry about that. I'll be back in a sec. Sorry about that. There's a bit going on here. Uh, at the uh, real life stuff and I don't professionally stream so there's no recording device you know, thing on the store and I, don't, I keep the phone there your family needs to ring now, I'm usually scanning for you know side rims and that if it was an R8 but we'll make this run a bit quicker we just want to share so I could finish the video here but I want to see show you that you know um, can I do the hex smoke again simply because I paint up a boss, which is the only thing really going to kill me at this point. As I said, uh, the next boss could be the Kenan boss, and I'll have to change weapons um, to a radioactive glove, I prefer, or an angelic aura, just anything fast firing, but the glove does auto-target the Kenan, so always move in and kill the cappers and the lobsters, don't worry about the others, just go in early. And R8, those guys bombard you and corner you in, it's dangerous. So there's a vault there I'd normally do. I'm going to have a look at the uh, vendor on the other side. Uh, we are doing elemental damage, so, but it's only up to... It's only doing our elemental damage. We do have that one now. Let's see what's on it. That's really nice because we're going to be critting um, on the boss and enemies. It hasn't got rate of fire and we haven't got many wildfires. It is a good bossing weapon though, it's probably safe to do that. But is there a craftsman? Usually there's a craftsman in this next section. I don't want to do anything without spores now. It's night and day without spores. Look at the movement from an enhanced one we just killed. It's paused. Game pauses you obviously. Now that you've got to run up quickly here. You'll get cappers and you'll get lobsters and you'll get sharks. But I want to go up here to get the sharks that drop there's our um, craftsman. It's usually here. It's either there or just back a bit. We're gonna get lobsters jump down here. Not worry about those guys or on that building over there. So as soon as they do, I'm gonna get to them cap. There's a lobster jumping down. Just want to get him straight out. And he's also enhanced. And stay out of that fire. There's another one. They're the important ones. Runs can be in early days lost. Well, before I worked out, well, I usually have spores by this point, I'd worked out that out. I just didn't have everything upgraded as much. And I was using the wrong starting thing, so I didn't always have the money. It had spores on it. That's too slow. So I'm just going to bump that up. I should go back to the angelic aura, but it's I don't want to make the run faster. We'll just do the lucky shot, the lucky dip. Usually there's also a um, well we had it back there, but look around, listen to your music to say the portal's open. <laughs> You're talking, I'm not listening. Um, usually I'd go back for that angelic, but I have to run back then do it, you know. So we're looking here, that's more CC, um, that's weapon damage after doing our E, which would be nice for the boss. Um, it's only on the next hit though, deal damage damage is adjacent, so this is the better one, just CC for the trash up ahead. And it's the last act after this boss, so hopefully it's the serpent boss, and it never is. It's always this guy, so this weapon's not good. We'll have to toss something here, but we'll get something ahead, and we know we've got plenty of, you know, we can do the rolls for free. Anything like we got that glove there. So what I do at this point is I just buy a weapon, I think, 
and you know it's fast firing which that is and they'll refresh again and there might be a better weapon so i would have liked the angelic or it would have melted the sky but this will do the job um only thing is you've got to aim at this what's on it doesn't really matter it's a spore place but we got rate of fire uh when the magazine is full so first 50 percent, and we do have deft hands so we're not reloading as much just the benefits to recap on scrolls it's a good one and that's a good one straight up 30 percent damage that's like the buffer shield um that's a bit different how it works but you know just just means you might not get one big hit we want to make sure we're using our q and our e often when you're doing a higher one here there's diminishing returns um on your weapon damage, your elemental damage from your weapon and your skill damage, you just have to make sure you're spamming them all so you don't get diminishing returns, it cancels them out. Another one is dashing, it does damage to you. Um, one, two, got lucky, bump that up. And we're already up to, usually I'm up to like just over that um, on the last boss, but because we got it early, we're good. So let's we'll see how we go. I've lost our res and this guy is, um, we have got our shield up though, so first thing we want to do is paint him. And you just want to pew pew the cannons. Then you want to kill, get out of that, and then kill the octopus that's going to be in that direction. CC, paint up, anything, just to keep our shield up. Bait the, the, the thing that, bait that, and then move to the cannon so you're not standing still to try to put that in. Do it once again. If you had fake death here, just killing those things that slow us, there's enemies that appear now. Better start doing some of this for our shield regen. Just got hit. Leave them up because you can hit those ones. You just leave them up so that if you got killed now, you could kill one. I don't have it, so I'll kill them. And you can get a res on the boss. So, have we got the weapon? Now, usually if it was on an eight, you'd have to do that another time but we can nuke this straight away the spores that one more so we get two goes whoop get out of that got hit so we're going to use our Q to get our shield back and stop getting slowed by those but we have our boots so they can't slow us anyway we're not in any hurry just waiting for the circles to come out and then I'll do the cannon just don't want to standing in it while I'm trying to do that we kill the cannonball that comes out but I'm just going to nuke it so an easy kill no one, but it wouldn't have been much harder on an R8. I'm going to do that because we do have elemental, and I'm hoping to get a radioactive glove or something ahead. That's nice weapon usually, but it doesn't have high projectile count. And we got our gauntlet. I don't like swapping here because you can't go back and roll spores. So we're going to be a bit weak, and you'll see the night and day between this weapon. Um, we got lucky shot chance, which will stack anything that you know leets in that up to 100. The decay effect uh, is increased. Shock effect's doing nothing. And when magazine's 50 so we got rate of fire for the first 50%. And we're hoping now, looking at our bit of a skill, wanting more of this one. We've got some fairly good defensives, that one, that one. Um, that just increases. So the longer they've got the dot on it, our grenade, the damage is reduced to us. Got some good CC there. That's not, that's weapon damage, and that's a one. So we're pretty good for the run now. I'd be happy with that if it was an R8. And on this one, I'm not worried about the damage. I'm just, uh, anything with, this gun's already putting on the effect, even without a paint, gets an extra 60%. So we're gonna start smashing when we get spores on this. Now, if you were doing an R8 jockle and only the hard mode, you can talk to this guy, he ignores you now, and swap let me just show you here, press C, and then you have to right click to move your mouse. We can swap one of those, and I've been forgetting about the ultimate gambler, I always do, for something that was better, like fake death might come up, and then that's assured in your run. Because we're going to melt the boss with what we've got so far. On an R8 we would too. What's happening here? Can't move forward for a second, it weirded out on me. Okay, so we're pretty weak now, look. I need to get a craftsman, so just... I'm scanning, it's still enough to kill. But this is the weapon without spores. If it had spores, one-shotting. Now this weapon does an enhanced ray to three nearby enemies. And this will take us through to the boss now. 
And I want to get a chat chest that re-rolls normal to enhanced. I want to try to, uh, to rare. I want to try to get some better stuff. Um, but it does by right clicking in the zone and you can't hear it, but there's a little ping in the game. Once you get the timing of it, it becomes quite easy. And you keep that little green and there's the, I'm going to dash up to him and get spores on. Even though I can hear monkeys charging for me. So I bump that up. We're over 400. Usually that's the level of weapon I am at the end of this run. It just makes a difference getting that weapon early and using the craftsman and keeping the weapon for the entire run. And now we're just reforging. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's uh, 1800 gold, you know, that might or might not happen have after you've re -roll, after you've upgraded. And now it's gonna be a one shot, even without the enhanced beam. Watch out for snipers, they're dangerous. The mountain guards, or whatever they're called, that rush at you. But I'm not even doing the hands beam because we're one shot in with spores. And I'm not kidding, but an R8 would be doing the same. You get some rate of fire on here, and you'd be just nuking. Just running through with a single beam here. They're not even getting a chance to shoot or get their frost off. You still die here. So I'm not doing my secondaries, I don't have time. Because I do that, it stops the weapon for a second. So the advantage of this over the um, over the rainbow is it's got decay on it every time. So it's going to slow elites. They just waddle towards you, and the really dangerous ones like uh, the arsonists or the enhanced arsonists, anything that you know sort of boxes you in. Uh, something alive. I'm not listening to my music. This back here. Uh, it's a fisherman. Yeah, they just throw a grenade. Got a rainbow too, just to show you that lots of weapons drop. So the burning's not helping us, the decay's not helping us, and the shock effect's not helping us. So all of those greens, but I would pick that up if I hadn't got the glove, re-rolled it down at the craftsman just behind, you can always backtrack, and it would still pew pew, and then I'm hoping for a chat chest, and I usually get it in this last act, that says re-roll all normals to rares. Sometimes it says a, a random, but no, there's a chat chest there. So keep an eye out for those. They can make an average weapon unbelievable. I'm not worried on this run. Now, they're important because they put shields and everything. But don't run in to get them and die because the cavalry, the cavalry up ahead, and these, you know, they're dying quick. But on the harder levels, and I'm just trying to show you, you know, prepare you for the harder reincarnation runs. Um, you go around the corner too quick, play defensively, and they frost you and one-shot you. Their damage is so high. They don't look nasty, but they are. Just looking at scrolls at this point. That's useless. I don't change weapons. And I don't like that because it gives me 20% lucky shot, but my white damage, which this is doing, is not helping us. Okay, so nothing there, but we could have gone for that if we hadn't got anything. I mean, it's fast firing over a thousand rounds, uh, shock effect, and it's got an extra projectile. So that would, you know, be all right. And I'd run back if I hadn't, you know, had to toss my rainbow. Let's have a look. Come on, give us some wonderful rate of fire. As I said, it's often here in the last act. If that wasn't there, I'd just upgrade my offhand. But let's see what we get. Lucky dip. So that's great. That means we're never reloading. That's after making a crit, which isn't helping us. Uh, when reloading after Kenny, minus for reload time. Uh, I can't scroll down to see the other. One, two, three. And that one will be great on the boss there. Just by hitting, we're going to get 100% lucky shot chance. So we're all right. I mean, it's an R1. You can actually do speed runs on these R1s because of the advantages that they give you. Defense again, 90, plus 90%. Now what do we do? Our shield up to 239 with one grenade. Not hitting anything. We're going to be at the boss soon. These rooms on R8, read your messages. I step in and just read straight away. I see if it appears. And on an R8, they often do. Uh, the worst in these rooms we're going to get is innumerable elites. We just get everything in the room as elites. And you haven't got much room, as you can see here. The guy that charges you with fire. Leaves a fire truck. They're the cavalry that really nuke on harder difficulties. They nuke on this difficulty too, but 
we're melting through shields. I'm not worried about any shield they put on. It's just the, a delay on their damage. You've got to wait one second after the shield gets a hit on it. Ammo, we're not even reloading now because of that. Don't need scrolls at this point. I, mean, I would if on an R8. That's a great one. That's why you collect like bad ones. But I've not been doing any scrolls and I'd definitely go for that to get another goblet choice of defensive. This room sometimes says walruses, everything turns into walruses, so you double kill of walruses. That's the danger guy and he's enhanced. Could have killed me if I got too close and didn't have the snow boots. So I would have come in much cautiously, it's just easier difficulty. Easy mode with spores. As I said, I'm not using my skills, you can see now, except for defensively when I'm on the bosses. Because spores just perform so well. I would always be aiming at this in the past. My son helped me understand how spores work. And it was the off weapon and the two best weapons were the Argus and the Wild Hunt. So we always went for that, but... So I'm just going to be painting everything up because it's dying so quick here. On the boss. And I'll put chapters in there. Um, do have a look at the, spir the spiritual assault video because if you're finding this hard because you haven't got you know your survival tree maxed out i can see a craftsman that's all i'm worrying about now is the craftsman uh, maybe i'd re-roll all inscriptions to get try to get rid of fire if it was not you know now these guys would nuke me i got too close i wouldn't be going close and i'll be making sure i do the enhanced beam i'm giving my right finger a, miss, a bit of a rest just to make sure I'm AOEing everything around but it's slowing them they're always enhanced on these runs and they nuke you just throw a grenade get my shield up to be safe as I go around the corner I'm not even using my E and if you watch videos I'm watching people using their E in that and it's not doing much or the Q and that's the guy that's the dangerous one in here he goes really fast. He lasts a lot longer than an eight, let me tell you. And that fire nukes you, and then you've got the guy that splits into three, and uh, you're pretty crazy in here, even in co-op. Me and my son, we're resing each other. But we're actually playing co-op difficulty because of the uh, overpower. And let me just show you in a second what our overpower is still doing, so just enhancing that. Now you can reforge that, um, you can get one at the start along the way where you can re-roll everything. And if you get that in the starting one, you can just re-roll and you only get three chances, I think, to, to re-roll re it. But you can get some really nice things and then you have to just realise it takes your spores off. So you've got to sort of reforge it afterwards. I forget the name of that one. It's got a little hammer in the thing. Uh, we're, there. we're not doing any lightning, so that's useless in its boss, I think. Yep. That's 41 minutes because we've been doing commentary and I've been a bit distracted with uh, stuff behind the scenes. Oh, that's a good one because we've got the glove. I just want movement speed on this boss. Um, you know, we'll just be looking for an injector or an Argus. Angelica, or I meant at this point. <laughs> Don't need that. Nothing on there, so we're just going to bump the weapon up and we're going to melt the boss. And we lost our res because of uh, me just... The, the first part... One to wait, you gotta play cautiously until you get spores. And then then you can sort of have a bit of fun. Oh I do. I'm a bit older, I'm fifty-seven. Son's in their twenties. And uh, it's great to game with them, I really love it. Not don't need to do enhanced beam here, it's only one. It doesn't do more damage, I don't think. Kill the canister. We're just gonna melt this guy. I'm gonna paint him up just to get my Q to get 238 shield because of our elemental shield, whatever we did, the blue one upgrade. He does a frontal cleave, we lost our whole shield. So just do your defensives. Kenister. And we're back up. That's why it's so good to get your defensives. You get a hit like that and our shield's back up. Pain him. We pushed him past the spiral. Oh no, there we go. Even with this, just go through. Even if you get hit, we've got such good defensives. Q and E will get our shield back up and he's gonna go to burn phase. Just keep your left mouse start button down. I need to pay him for damage, I suppose. And E, but I we got it with a third left. If he if that if you don't have the damage at that point, and I've you'll see a, there's a jockle video, one of the first I posted, 
my first kill and then there's a jockle after it. Where I melt him quicker than we just did then, it just depends on what you get along the way. And we didn't choose any, any scrolls, which can really do some major weapon damage. You can get like 80% lucky shot. You can get merciless combo that just destroys. Okay, that's it. Let's see what we got. And I spent a bit of stuff on the run. Game's very generous. What did we make on our essence? You made 500. Put it in your skills for the next run. Um, so you're ahead even spending along the way and it's worth spending to be successful. Now, I'd say you've got to have that for this to work. So just the last comment. You can't etch. You have to wait to the second act and then you got to get lucky with it dropping with a Gemini uh, without that. But of course, even if you don't have that maxed out, but I'd be pushing down to that if I knew what I know now pretty early. But you then also need to get down in the survival tree. You know, that's pretty major. That, uh, you know, your shield's broken and we've got only getting 25% hit of the damage after while we try to get our shield up. Great survivability and the ones before. That's co-op. You don't need to do that. That's co-op, you don't need to do that. This one here is important to get your, you know, secondaries and primary cooldown and base damage of the scrolls. And scrolls really could make that character double as powerful if we'd done the side rooms. Uh, this one here, you know, you sort of want to do the one at least with the injectors if you're doing that run um, and the submachine gun. So that covers the angelic aura and the, um, the injectors which are the, you know, what we used in this run. And it gives us a base damage of lucky shot as well. And that gives us lucky shot down there. So that's 50% lucky shot built in to the skill tree. This one was really important for me before I worked out that Craftsman's Inheritor because I was scrambling to sell everything that dropped that I didn't do. Um, I was hoping for some scrolls. That one's a really important one just to refresh for the Argus or the Wild Hunt in the peddlers doesn't do the but if you do jockle by the way they do let you refresh i think twice um from memory the phantom peddlers so you you get some really good weapons from from those okay i'm capped out again on that i hope that helps you see how the crown prince um can be strong even if you're not investing in skills along the way and you'll be successful i'll put up an r8 down the track if uh, i get time uh, but you can have a look at the bunny one that I do just to prove it does work um, regardless right now and that's up that's the bunny that does an R8 has spores in the title I'll pin slight RNG if you want to do the grenade builds and try those for comparison and not just spores but I think this is superior on every hero have fun